MCOM is currently operating in Nakolia, a country that has been struggling with terrorism attacks for the last decade. These terrorist activities were facilitated by mobile phones using networks provided by mobile operators. Arrests and convictions of the people involved proved to be difficult, forcing the promulgation of new legislation that required all mobile operators to register all SIM cards by 2013, which was further extended. MCOM didn't comply, hence got slapped by a hefty fine of 6 billion US dollars after missing the second deadline, which was reduced to 3.9 billion US dollars. The company then moved to court to challenge the fine. This has consequently affected MCOM's brand. The fine, 6 billion US dollars, which was later reduced to 3.9 billion US dollars in Nakolia, wiped 25% of MCOM's market capitalization. This news surfaced after MCOM published its interim financial reports for a period ending June 2015. Joint auditors P. Dubelic, Inc. and Sinsago Auditors received a written management representation signed by the chief executive officer of MCOM Nicolia that management was not aware of any material matters regulatory or otherwise which were pending and worthy of reporting. MCOM holds 49% of shares in a joint venture called JV Cellular in Elenia. The Elenian government was sanctioned for violating its international obligation under the Proliferation Treaty, otherwise known as NNPT. It is a breach of international law to deal financially with any company in or the government of Elenia. Other issues impacting business confidence in Elenia include a hyperinflationary economy as well as harsh indigenization laws. MCOM was perceived to play a role in suppressing citizen rights by availing personal phone call records that assisted the conviction of many who took part in a pro-democracy strike in 2013. An ideal opportunity has come up for MCOM to expand their market in the Asia-Pacific region. The expressions of interest, quote-unquote, for the 2018 renewal of four of its mobile licenses in Chinese, which currently are assigned to the top four operators Intercom, Axtontel, Cloudnet, and Bartini. MCOM faces challenges as a foreign company. CTRA policy of no new licenses are to be awarded. Populist political party reforms to protect the telecommunication sector from foreign companies and critical success factors that are to be met. So as you can see from the clip you just saw, that this is real stuff, these are real challenges that these students have to face and have to solve. 
Now, everyone is waiting. What is 2017 case study going to look like? What do these people have to solve? And how real is this case study? So I want to bring on Stephen to explain this case study that all the candidates have to resolve and solve in 2017. So Stephen, the time has come to explain to the world on how 2017's case study is going to look like. Thank you, Johnny. So this year, 2017, the case study moves from the telecommunications industry to the global mining sector. The case company is Amango. It simulates essentially the strategic leadership and business decisions that the group CFO and the board of directors face. It also has embedded ethical dilemmas that create the context for organizational change. So the teams have to prioritize and focus six key issues and answer these six key questions for the board. One, how do we deal with the ethical challenges of managing the group divisional performance reward system? Two, should we proceed with the strategic joint venture decision in Canada? Three, should we dispose of the business unit in Brazil? Four, should we sell off the residential property? And if we do, do we use the proceeds from the sale to deliverage the balance sheet? Or do we use the funds to buy back shares? Five, should we shut down the mine in Australia? But further to that, how do we deal with the threat of the strike from the unions? And even more so, how do we deal with the protected strike already in motion? And six, how do we reconstruct and reorganize the business in light of falling commodity prices and the downturn in China? That journey is the 2017 case study. Wow. You know, I told you guys when we started this, I told you that this is life changing. I told you that this will fill the gap of a student who's studying theory and get him into a real life situation. There's nothing more real life than what you've just heard. These are real things happening in businesses every day that a student who's studying some kind of qualification that wants to better himself. Can you imagine if he solves these issues on a stage with a world class of judges with hundreds of years of experience? What what kind of students, what are we doing to education in Africa, in South Africa, and for the rest of the world? I am so excited. I'm so pumped for this competition, guys.